Welcome back to a brand new video guys. But today we are gonna do part two of the how to get into medical school video. You guys showed a lot of love and support on the first one. If you haven't already, make sure you watch that because this is like a part two of that. So if you guys had any questions, those may have already been answered in that one. But essentially what we are going to talk about today is if someone has already completed a medical degree in another country, like for example, let's say somebody has finished or is in the middle of doing an MBBS degree in India, you are considered as an international medical graduate if you're looking into transferring into the United States to practice medicine. So before getting started with this video, let's do a quick recap and see what we learned from video number one. In the US, it's different. A doctor's degree can only be pursued as a post-graduation degree. This means that after you finish grade 12, you need to do an undergraduate degree after which you can start that doctoral degree. Point number two is that that is the doctoral degree in the US is not called MBBS. After you get that undergraduate degree, you pursue a doctor of medicine degree or an MD which is typically four years. And if you're someone who's looking to make that transfer in the most simplest way possible, you would have to write the United States Medical Licensing Examination or the USMLE. That's about it. That's all you have to do. But it's not as simple as that because the test is divided into three different parts and you need to give three separate examinations. So a quick disclaimer out there before we get started, the USMLE is valid and needs to be given by every single person who wants to practice medicine in the US irrespective of whether you're an international graduate or not. So everybody has to give it, people coming in from the outside, it's not something that's special just for you guys. Now, as you guys already know, I am a biomedical engineer, so I'm not a doctor myself, which means that I did not go through this process myself firsthand. So I did a lot of digging and research so that I could give you guys the right information and show you a couple alternative pathways into getting where you want to. So with that said, I would highly recommend that before making this huge decision, do your own research and make sure you are 100% thorough with the path that you choose. So now let's say you are an MBBS student who's either in the middle of your degree or has completed your degree and you want to move to the US to practice medicine. So you would need to write the US MLE test. Now this is a three part exam, uh, which basically tests the medical knowledge of a student. USMLE part one tests the conceptual and theoretical concepts related to medicine. And this is an online test, which means that you can write this even if you're in a different country like India. It's pretty much similar to how you would write the GRE, the TOEFL, or the SAT. You would register for the test, pay your fees, and then the test would be conducted at a test center. So I'm not gonna go into super details of the scoring, the format of each test, because you can find that information online, but you'll see it up on the screen anyway. Now, an important thing to note here is that starting January 2022, the grading system of the USMLE Step 1 is going to change. Now, this means that instead of a grade-based exam, this is gonna now turn into a pass or fail grade. Now, let's move on to USMLE Step Number 2. So step two is divided into two parts, CS and CK. While the overall goal of USMLE step two is to test the clinical application and clinical knowledge of a medical student, it gets a little tricky because only one of these parts can be done in India and the other one has to be completed in the United States. CK can be completed while you are in another country like India, but the CS part of the test has to be given at the test centers in the United States. Now, once you've completed USMLE step two, you would typically go into a residency program, which can last anywhere between three to eight years, depending on what your field of specialization is. After this comes USMLE step three, and this is a little tricky as well. Like the CS section of USMLE part two, USMLE part three can also only be given in the US because this tests patient management skills in a live setting. So the step three test is basically a two day test with a ton of case simulations and multiple choice questions. 
So the good thing about this test is that it can be taken year round, but you do have to make an appointment prior to writing the test. So that pretty much covers the USMLE as well as residency. And if it's not clear already, you can pretty much imagine, imagine that a part of the USMLE can be given from your home country, but a good chunk of it, residency, step two CS and step three needs to be completed in the United States. And this is where a lot of students face a lot of difficulties because coming to the United States to just complete these tests is hard. And what kind of a visa are you going to get? Right? So I've seen a lot of students do this. What they do is after they've completed their MBBS degree, they join a master's program in the United States, which gives them an F1 visa. Now, while you're here, you can write the USMLE Step 2 CS as well as the USMLE Step 3. And while you're physically present in the United States, you can also start looking for residency programs. You can get on interviews and it's better to have these discussions in person. And while you're here, you have the flexibility to look around and, you know, make connections and develop those relationships. Now, when it comes to the residency program, different states have different rules. So depending on which state you choose, you may very well find yourself in a position where you're earning a good amount of money even while you're doing your residency. So make sure that you do your entire research. So that pretty much covers up how you can transition into the United States if you want to become a doctor. And at this point, I'm pretty sure you guys are thinking that this is a very complicated process. And absolutely, it very well is like if you calculate everything from video one, as well as everything I've spoken about in this video, it takes roughly 11 years to become a doctor from scratch. That's a lot of time commitment and a good chunk of someone's life to dedicate into building your career. So don't take this decision lightly and make sure that you weigh in all of your options. And I hope that this video was able to provide you with a little guidance um, towards this path. But all in all, I would definitely say that it's worth it because if you're someone who's passionate about this career path, there is a lot of research that can be done in the United States, the quality of life, the type of cutting edge infrastructure technology that you would be involved in making the world a better place um, is just fascinating. And of course, everyone knows that the salaries of doctors, doctors in the United States are ridiculous. So that's a plus point too, being financially independent. So this is definitely a worthwhile career, but basically this is the last time I'm going to talk about medicine on my channel. This video, as well as the previous one, kind of covers up everything about how someone would want to transition from a different country to the United States to, to practice medicine. And the reason why this is going to be my last video on this topic is because I'm not a doctor and this is definitely not my area of expertise. So I don't feel really comfortable giving you guys in-depth advice because I haven't firsthand experienced this. On the other hand, I am a biomedical engineer. And if you guys have any questions related to this career path, this field of study, the education, the stuff that goes on within this, shoot them in the comments below. I would love to answer them and I can just go on for hours and hours on this topic of biomedical engineering. But yeah, that's about it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you found it useful, don't forget to share, like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Um, on a side note, I think we're about to hit like 5,000 subscribers. It blows my mind that so many of you guys are uh, supporting this channel, 5,000 people. I just, I physically cannot imagine standing in front of 5,000 people and talking to you guys. Oh my God. Thank you so much for all the support and next video we'll be hitting 5k. So definitely something special coming your way for that one. <laughs> Until then, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.